Right now in my hands, I'm holding the full frame equivalent of a 2400 millimeter lens, but we'll get to this in a minute. Oh my God. This is an ND100,000 made by KNF Concept. It's essentially 16.6 .6 stops of exposure reduction. And what that means is it's essentially completely black for any normal type of lighting. You can take a look right here. But that level of neutral density can be very helpful if you're trying to photograph or video the sun in situations like the upcoming solar eclipse. Now, believe it or not, there is one step stronger than this ND filter, and that's an ND1 million that KNF Concept also make. They put together this handy chart that kind of shows your different camera settings depending on which filter you're using and what conditions you're trying to capture. While it's kind of a one trick pony, I wanted to show you it so you can see kind of what it is, what it comes with, how it works. And it might be something you wanna pick up last minute if you are trying to take a shot of the solar eclipse. Now, of course, it doesn't look like much right now, but it's always good to practice and prepare and familiarize yourself with settings and conditions so you're actually ready when the day comes. There's always a good reason to try something new. It's gonna help you with your current work as well as all those future projects yet to come. With setups like this Sigma 150 to 600 on a Lumix G9 Mark II, you can get some insane reach. With a 2X extender, you can push that range even further. The sun fills the frame. It's, it's too close. I gotta zoom out a little bit. So I opted to not use the 2X extender and just use the 600 millimeter focal length. This is the Viltrox EF to Micro Four Thirds lens adapter. And at 600 millimeters on this lens, it's the Sigma 150 to 600. I can get the perfect close-up of the sun. I've never been so excited to look at a white circle on a screen before. Yeah, this lens adapter is a little loosey-goosey. This is one of the more extreme combinations that I've tried, but it does have its uses. I'm gonna switch into video mode and just see what options I've got here. The sun is moving. So I do have to track it a little bit. I can't say I've ever filmed the sun before, but there's a first time for everything, right? I chose to get the 82 millimeter size. I just find that so helpful and useful for almost every type of filter I buy. I want the 82. So for a lens that has 82 millimeter filter threads, that's really easy. It screws right on, no problem. But if your lens isn't an 82 millimeter filter thread, I like to use these step up rings. This one happens to be a 72 to 82 in one single ring but they come in all shapes and sizes. So no matter what lens you're using, you can always get a step up ring to make all of them 82. And I find that is the most useful, best way to invest in filters and make sure that they're compatible with essentially every lens in your kit. So anytime I buy a new lens with a different front filter size, I usually grab a step up ring that's the size of the lens converted to 82. These are really affordable and in terms of lens cost, they add basically nothing compared to the total value of the lens itself. Just like their step up rings, there's also step down rings. So the front of this Sigma lens is a 95 millimeter filter thread, but I can step down to 82 so I can still use my ND100,000. The ND100,000 comes in this nice silvery packaging, kind of overkill for something that's essentially just going to be garbage but it is kind of nice and shiny and reflective if that's something you care about. What I'm more interested in are these microfiber cleaning cloths. I've never had a cleaning cloth come in such a tight hermetically sealed package. So I wanted to open one of these up for the first time because I don't know what these actually look like. I'm wondering, are they moist? What's going on in here? It came with three of them. So let's take a look. This is probably one of the nicest, silkiest microfiber cloths I've ever had my hands on. I'm actually quite impressed. It's not moist or damp or anything, but I don't know why it needs to come sealed in the package. I guess that ensures it's extra clean, but this is a really nice cleaning cloth and now I have three of them. Of course, if you're trying to take a picture of the sun, you can think of an ND filter kind of like sunglasses, but in this case, way, way stronger. This ND100,000 is like Eclipse glasses, which are special. They're a lot stronger than regular old sunglasses 
which you can sort of see through these. This ND100,000 is going to essentially block out all the light except for those brightest of bright objects like the sun. But you may be asking yourself, why would you want to use something like this? Well, there's a handful of reasons and it's not essential, but it is helpful. For one, ISOs only go so low. A lot of cameras only go down to ISO 100, ISO 200, ISO 50 in some cases. And that's good for controlling the noise in the shot, but for exposure purposes, ISO becomes real useless when it comes to the sun. The other option you would wanna look at is your shutter speed, but also shutter speeds only go so fast and maybe your camera doesn't go quite fast enough. Using a strong ND filter like this means I have a lot more control over my shutter speed. With photography, we're so used to using shutter speed to control our motion blur, but with video, our shutter speed is often locked or fixed, especially if you're following rules like shutter angle. When you're shooting the sun, there's no reason to shoot wide open. Why would you? It's the sun. It's a giant ball of burning gas. It's really, really bright. So there's no need to shoot wide open. And that will also help things like detail resolution and sharpness because most lenses are gonna be sharpest around the mid range of their aperture. It's when you start getting into those higher aperture values, F16, F22, you can run into issues such as diffraction, which are going to decrease the sharpness and resolution of your shot. When you're trying to expose for something as bright as the sun, the temptation will be to turn your aperture all the way up or down, depending on how you look at it. You wanna avoid those high apertures. That extra depth of field will actually show things like sensor and lens dust that can ruin your photo. So if your ISO only goes so low and you need to shoot with an aperture that's somewhere in the middle range of those f-stop values and you only have so much control with your shutter, you might want to look at something like a really strong neutral density filter such as this 100,000 or like I said, there's even a million ND if you prefer, which is essentially 20 stops reduction of light. I'm personally gonna try a few things. Yes, I'm going to take a photo of the eclipse, but I'm also gonna play around with things like time-lapse and video and having an ND filter solves a lot of problems associated with exposing for the brightness of the sun. In this case, I'll be using a few different cameras and that's why I've got a few different ND filters that I'm going to use. I also have an ND1000 that came as part of a kit from KNF Concept and I also have an ND1000 just to test out that extreme side of the equation. This is a filter that I can't really think of any other purpose. Maybe there's something interesting with a long exposure strobe photography that you could do with a strong ND filter like this, but it's really built for these rare cosmic events like a solar eclipse and any Anything else that might be incredibly bright. Perhaps there's something interesting to do with lightning. I don't know yet, but I at least wanted to talk about it so you had a chance to see it and potentially order one for yourself if you are trying to get some cool shots of the solar eclipse. I believe it is one of the last solar eclipses in North America for quite a while. I think the next one is in 20 years. So while I'm sure there's plenty of people who will be taking photos and videos of this event, I like to use these opportunities to try new things, to experiment, to play around. And usually when I do that, I end up learning something new that helps me for the next time I need to film or shoot. It may not be a solar eclipse, but these rare opportunities allow me to test and try and increase my own personal skill set so I'm more prepared for the next problem to solve or the next opportunity that comes up. I really think the more you do the work, the better you get at it, and different types of projects can still result in lessons that help for other different projects. Doing one shoot is never just one shoot. It's that shoot plus all the lessons and experience that you learn from it. So try new things out. Even if you don't wanna shoot the solar eclipse, that's fine. Push yourself to find something else that you find interesting and creative and fulfilling because I promise you, it will only make you better for the next project that comes after. Let me know what you think. Are there any other uses for this level of neutral density beyond the sun? Leave a comment, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Done.